Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News Midday starts now. Good morning and thanks for joining us for 23 ABC News at 11 a.m. I'm Danielle Kernkamp. We begin with live pictures of what appears to be another pot shop bust in Oildale. This is on the corner of Norris Road and Northchester Avenue. Our photographer on scene, Javier Posadas, says the Bureau of Cannabis Control is there. This, of course, comes after the same agency issued search warrants on two local pot shops yesterday after they were found to be operating without a license. Those shops were Knott's Collective on Knott's Street and Backyard Organics on River Boulevard. After receiving complaints, the Bureau sent someone undercover to make a purchase and confirmed they were operating without a license. They're getting the safe open, they're opening the ATM machine and getting the cash out of there. They're taking shelving. I mean, you have to make it as difficult as possible for these people to reopen. We have more information on these busts on our website, turn to 23.com. We're also live streaming these pictures on the shop on Norris and Chester on our 23 ABC Facebook page. The impeachment trial is in its final day, a decision in the Senate expected later today, and the trial's end follows President Trump's State of the Union address last night. ABC's Andrew Dimbert's on Capitol Hill tracking the trial's conclusion. It's decision day in the impeachment trial of President Trump. Senators who have sat silently while serving as jurors get up to 10 minutes to speak. Then the final vote. For just the third time in U.S. history, senators will decide on whether to remove a sitting president from office. This does not even approach a case for the first presidential removal in American history. But in the Republican-controlled Senate, there are not enough votes to reach the two-thirds majority required to convict the president on either article of impeachment, obstruction of Congress, or abuse of power. During the trial, Democrats had hoped to introduce new witness testimony and documents, but failed to secure enough Republican votes. This is the first impeachment trial of a president that has no witnesses and no documents. The impeachment process coming to a close after months of investigation and claims that on a call, Trump tied military aid to Ukraine in exchange for investigating his political rival. But the White House and the president have maintained the call was perfect. Those who are trying to prosecute the president in the Senate trial have failed to meet their burden of proof. In the chamber where he was impeached, the hard feelings were clearly on display during President Trump's State of the Union address as he refused to shake Speaker Nancy Pelosi's hand and later as she tore up his speech. But during his remarks, there was no mention of impeachment. Instead, Trump using the platform to tout his accomplishments ahead of his bid for re-election. The state of our union is stronger than ever before. And ABC News is hearing the president is likely to respond to his expected acquittal sometime today or tomorrow. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And this morning during the weekly GOP press conference, Kern County Congressman and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy spoke about the upcoming Senate vote. Today, the president will be acquitted for life. I hope the Democrats will finally end their desire to impeach this president. I know it's been what they craved the majority for and what they spent and wasted their majority on. I hope they wake up today knowing that we can be better, that we can work for the next hundred years that this century will be ours. Again, the Senate is scheduled to begin voting at 1 p.m. Pacific time today. So stick with 23 ABC. We'll have live coverage on air and on all of our digital platforms. Right now, let's take a break. Bring in Chief Meteorologist Elena Rusk and see what's in store for us on the rest of this Wednesday. Yeah, so we've been dealing with those really cold mornings, right? It was a little warmer this morning, but nothing warm about the forecast out there. We still have that cold, dry air mass in place. You still have those northerly winds coming down, not bringing any precipitation our way, but leaving us with a healthy breeze and therefore moderate air quality and some 40s. But this is warmer than it was at this time yesterday. We've climbed up to 42 in Fraser Park. They didn't even see that for a high yesterday, and it's not even lunchtime. So a sign that things are recovering. We're starting to see a little more sunshine, a little warming, getting closer to Average. average for this time of year in Bakersfield is 60. You see we're at 56, so still a little farther to go, but I am taking us above average heading into the rest of the week and the beginning of your weekend. Your seven days coming up. 
The man who opened fire inside a Greyhound bus Monday morning is scheduled to appear in Kern County Superior Court this afternoon for his arraignment on several charges, including first degree murder. 33 year old Anthony Williams was arrested following the shooting that left one woman dead and five others injured as the bus was headed to San Francisco on the I-5. CHP says Williams is a resident of Maryland, but officials have not confirmed why he was in California or how long he had been staying here. The victim has been identified as 51 year old Lurbis Selena Vence of Columbia. Two of the injured are listed in critical condition. Williams is facing one count of first degree murder and five counts of attempted murder. He's scheduled to be arraigned today at three o'clock. It has been almost 24 years since 19 year old college student Kristen Smart went missing, but today authorities have announced that search warrants have been served in San Luis Obispo County and in Washington State. The Slow County Sheriff's Office says they're disclosing the development because of the high profile nature of the investigation and to avoid any spread of misinformation. The search warrants were limited in scope and sealed by the court. The FBI and LA County Sheriff's deputies were seen outside San Pedro in a residential neighborhood this morning. Kristen Smart was last seen returning to her dorm at Cal Poly Slow after an off campus party in May of 1996. Well, right now, CDC officials are beginning the screening process as passengers aboard a flight from Wuhan, China are now at the Miramar military base in San Diego. Within the last two hours, a flight landed at Miramar after stopping at Travis Air Force Base in Northern California. Two flights landed at Travis this morning, carrying hundreds of people who had been evacuated from Wuhan amidst the growing concerns over the coronavirus. Passengers from one plane stayed at Travis and others are now at Miramar. The passengers will be quarantined at both bases for 14 days. According to our sister station in San Diego, no military personnel will have any contact with the passengers. The passengers will be cared for by the CDC and Health and Human Services staff. Rosemary's Creamery will be closed today in honor and celebration of its founder, Frank DeMarco, who died last week. DeMarco was 89 years old when he died. For the last 36 years, his legacy has brought sweetness and joy to the community through the sweet treats at Rosemary's Creamery. The ice cream shop, named after DeMarco's wife of more than 60 years, was opened by the couple back in 1984. Services will be this morning at St. Francis Church. They began at 1030 and the mass will follow at 11. The family asks that in lieu of flowers that a donation be made to Our Lady of Guadalupe School or the Santa Rosa High School Foundation in DeMarco's memory, class of 1949. Kern County Animal Services has announced a new texting system that will help people who have lost their pets. 23 ABC's Daniela Garrido has a look at the resources that it provides. It's like my kid, you know, it's so hard, very hard. I Words are not enough to explain what I'm feeling right now. Kilo, a red-nosed pit bull, has been missing from his home since Sunday afternoon in southwest Bakersfield. Miles from where he went missing, his owners were searching the Kern County Animal Shelter Tuesday morning in hopes someone had found him. I'm making some list of uh, animal shelters where we, I can visit and check. When people lose an animal, uh, they're like family members, and sometimes um, it's, it's hard to determine what the next steps are. The new text to home service allows pet owners to text the word lost to 555-888 for resources during their search. So some of the text messages you receive are, um, you know, a, a link uh, on your phone to get you right to our webpage to fill out a lost pet form with a description of your animal that comes directly to us. And then uh, we have some volunteers that will um, look at some of those pets and see if they're, they're in the shelter. I mean, we can't guarantee that we'll find your pet, but we always make the best effort. Some of the other text messages you, you'll find, um, you'll get a text message with links to all of our animals that are currently in our shelter. It's updated hourly. Um, you'll get links to other shelters in the area that have uh, those lost pets on their website, City of Bakersfield and the SPCA. The program is funded by an innovation grant from the Petco Foundation in Sacramento and has minimal cost to the Kern County Animal Services Department. About 5,000 pets were adopted last year, um, another probably 1,500 or so that were returned to the field, stray feral cats, and probably another 2,500 that were picked up by rescue organizations in the area. So a lot of animals leaving here, um, not with their former owners, which is, which is it's a problem. And that's what this program is hopefully going to fix. I'm Daniela Garrido, 23 ABC, connecting you.